guys, here today we're gonna talk about a question that I am getting so often right now that it's absolutely ridiculous and I figured I've gotta make a video about this. We are gonna talk about when the stock market will bottom in my opinion. Are we looking at days? Are we looking at weeks? Are we looking at months? Are we looking at a year plus for the stock market to bottom? I'm gonna give you my full opinion on when I think the stock market is gonna bottom and why I think the stock market will bottom then, okay? So I hope you guys really enjoy this video here today. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button if you appreciate me doing a video like this, which is certainly out of my norm of a video I would do, okay? I am no like short-term speculator. I don't usually make calls on stuff that's going on short-term, okay? Everybody knows me from being the guy that makes YouTube videos on financial education and financial education too. And for my investing philosophies that are very, very similar to somebody like a Warren Buffett, which is long-term investing, look at a company for multi-years out and making long-term predictions on a company, looking at all the data, looking at all the fundamentals, looking at the financials and making judgments based upon that, okay? That is what I do. And I also help folks in my private group get to that level where they're long-term investors and they understand everything to look for in stocks and make these type of long-term decisions, okay? So a video like this is gonna be extremely rare. And I hope you guys appreciate that, okay? Like, like literally, 99% of my time is spent making long-term predictions on what companies are great values based upon the next three years, five years, seven years out. That's what I do. This whole short-term stuff, this, this occupies maybe 1%, like literally 1% or maybe even less than 1% of my brain power goes toward making short-term decisions and trying to think about these sorts of things like when the market will bottom and those sorts of things guys so hope you appreciate this video here today by the way just so you guys know i'm giving you a free stock investing checklist if you want to go ahead and check it out down there all you got to do is put in your email we'll send you over the checklist which you will be able to download absolutely for free and essentially you'll get to see a lot of things i look for in a stocks and, and when you're researching these stocks you'll be able to go ahead and say okay does it hit this bar does it hit that bar so hope you guys enjoy that it's absolutely free it's going to be the pinned comment down there Okay, so where I want to start out with a video like this is I want to look at this graph that somebody posted actually in the Discord chat a couple days ago. Okay, what we're looking at here, this shows you that the current S&P 500, you know, huge correction or crash, whatever you want to call it, against previous ones in modern history. Okay, and what you're going to notice here, okay, the first thing to notice is this was last updated yesterday. Now, keep in mind here today, the market's down more. Now, we'll see where things shake out. I'm recording this video a little before the market closed, but neither say the market's down pretty big again today. So even if it recovers a bit, it will still be down big today, okay? But I think it's something very important. If we look at this graph here, we're going to see this type of move in this, like this fast, guys, like this is unprecedented. You don't get this type of move down almost ever, like, like literally ever, at least not in modern history. Like this is, this is extraordinary. I mean, we're talking about the markets down 30% plus in, in literally a month's time. Who would have thunk it, okay? Now I have two other things circled there. The, basically 2007 and 2000. The reason I have those two circled is a lot of people believe that we might go through a, a long gated period where the market goes down and down and down for a long period of time, similar to what happened in 2007 or similar to what happened in 2000. So a lot of people are, are thinking maybe we don't bottom till a year from now, maybe we don't bottom for two years from now, okay? So let's talk about each of those scenarios a little bit, okay? So if you guys ever seen that Kevin Hart skit, it was in one of his funny, you know, like stand-up specials where essentially he's talking about like uh, old people falling down, how they, his grandpa falls down so slow, it's like nothing happens fast. That was similar to like the 2007 through 2009 recession, right? It, it, it didn't happen overnight. It, it, it got worse and worse and, and more foreclosures started to happen. And the real estate market started to drop more and more. Job losses continued, continued. And so the 2007 through 2009 massive global recession, it was something that played out over literally a year and a half to two years time. And keep in mind, a lot of folks didn't feel, at least on Main Street, like we started coming out of that until really like 2011, 2012. So it was, it was a long period of time where it was pretty rough out there. It was like nothing that happened fast because there wasn't something that just like overnight just like made everything bad. It was just like things slowly got worse and worse and worse and worse. And next thing you know, uh, all these different products came out, the CDOs, the credit default swaps, all those sorts of things. And need to say the banking sector got in a real bad place real fast. Uh, government probably didn't act quite fast enough till it was, you know, a little too late in that situation. So needless to say, 
that was dramatic and it definitely was not something that just happened overnight. It just slowly got worse and worse and worse, okay? 2000, let's talk about 2000. So 2000, market went down, you know, roughly, you know, 50% as far as S&P 500, peaked to trough. And it took quite a while to get that out of the system. Well, keep in mind, that was during the biggest stock market bubble in the history of the stock market. Like, like not, not even a question. Like, that was the biggest stock market bubble in the history of the stock market. This graph shows you how big of a bubble we had in the stock market. I mean, it was absolutely unbelievable. We're talking about the P ratios on S&P 500 stocks on average, we're trading in the 40s, in the 40s. Never mind the, the massive gauntlet of, of stocks in the NASDAQ that were trading at the most ridiculous valuations with companies that had basically no business models. Like it, was insane, okay? Absolutely insane. There's no other period you can ever compare basically what happened in the tech bubble. There's no other period. Like that was unreal what happened. Just way too much excitement. Valuations for all stocks went through the sky and it led to a real bad situation. Keep in mind, P ratio should be in the stock market usually between 15 and 20. That is fair value. When you start getting above 20, you start getting too overvalued. When you get under 15, you get to a point where the stock market is very undervalued. It's as simple as that. You look throughout history, that's the way it is. And when you're talking about P ratios trading in the 40s on average, you're going to set yourself up for a massive, I mean, an absolutely massive stock market crash. And it, did, it wasn't something that just happened overnight. It did take time to play out. It took time to play out. It took time to get out of that just craziness situation, needless to say, which absolutely need to happen, okay? So we go back to the, this, this current situation, right? Market's down probably 30% plus as of right now, as far as the S&P 500. Dow, I believe, is actually down even more than S&P 500, and, and it all happens in basically about a month's time, or just over a month's time. Absolutely incredible. And so the best analogy I can give for the stock market right now is the stock market is in free fall, no different than somebody that is skydiving, right? <laughs> Somebody that goes skydiving, they're just they're flying through the air, going down so fast. And that is what the stock market is in right now. And we're seeing the stock market go down faster than we've ever seen, ever seen at any point in history. I mean, it's just absolutely in free fall. And why is this? Well, we know it's the Roni situation, right? The entire United States is basically in shutdown right now. The entire United States of America is basically in shutdown right now. The, I mean, uh, businesses, uh, businesses for the most part are shut down right now or are in a place where they're maybe running, but running very minimally, very minimally. And so when you have the United States shut down like this, nothing matters. No one cares about anything. The Fed cuts rates to zero. The stock market doesn't care. $700 billion quantitative easing program, the stock market doesn't care. You know, uh, oh, we're going to delay taxes. Oh, we're going to send checks for $1,000 and blah, blah, blah. Literally, the stock market doesn't care. The stock market doesn't care about any of this. They literally don't. All the stock market cares about right now is just the fact that the United States of America is basically shut down. Most of the global economy around the world is shut down right now. And a lot of folks are wondering, can the economy withstand this in a way that when we start to come out of this, can we come out of this and actually have a prosperous economy? Or is this going to be something that takes years and years just to get back to where we were, let's say, a month and a half ago? Okay, I mean, like, we're not talking about a long time ago. So that's the whole question. And so here's kind of my opinion, okay, on this. And then we'll get into when I believe the stock market will bottom, why I believe it will bottom then, okay? So basically, if the United States is shut down for one to two months, in my opinion, we can handle that as an economy. I mean, obviously, if everything's shut down, there's basically no earnings, anything like that. That's dramatically bad. There will be some job losses in this. But if it's a one to two month shutdown, I absolutely believe the U.S. economy can withstand that. And I believe if somebody thinks that like we can't overcome that and, and get back on the right track, especially by like 2021, I, I believe that's just a little short sighted and they're not quite giving the U.S. economy enough credit at the end of the day, okay, which we got plenty of credit here, okay? Now, where things could get interesting, where things could could get really bad and where we could potentially have an elongated recession is if this whole U.S. economy shutdown and the global economy in general, if this lasts more than two months, keep in mind we just went into shutdown basically this week. This week is really the first official week that we're in full shutdown in the United States of America, okay? And basically, if this goes more than two months, I think it's going to be no bueno, okay? For my, for my non-Espanol speakers out there, no good. If it goes for a 
four months, six months, eight months, nine, I mean, that would be dramatically bad. And we would have a very elongated recession if that happened. I do not believe that will happen, but if it happened, it could get ugly, absolutely, okay? I do not believe that is what is gonna happen, okay? Basically, I believe that in around the middle of April, maybe around the 13th, 20th, I believe life is gonna start again. Now, this doesn't mean every business starts back up. This does not mean everybody's just flying around and doing whatever, okay? I believe this is the start, that will be the start when things start coming back online, when people start focusing on business again, when commerce starts to proceed again. Which keep in mind, there will be some commerce during this whole bad situation. It's just gonna be far, far, far less than obviously you know a regular time or something like that. So in my opinion, we're looking at the middle to maybe the end of April to when life is gonna start up again and we're gonna get rolling to a certain extent, okay? And then I believe as we go throughout May, more more businesses will come online, we will start having more and more commerce, people will get back to work, things will start building and building and building as we go throughout the summer, and it's not gonna be something like everything's back to 100% normal overnight. Let's be very, very clear about that. But the stock market doesn't need that. What the stock market needs is the fact that we just come back to life, and we get in a situation where things start coming back to life, more business is done, and that will give the stock market a lot of confidence if things start to build throughout the summer and going into the fall time, okay? Now, the question is, when do I believe the stock market will bottom? Now that we have all that for context, when do I actually believe the stock market will bottom? And so with all that context given, guys, in my opinion, the stock market is likely to bottom within the next 30 days, okay? And let me explain why I believe the stock market will bottom within the next 30 days in this situation. Why do I believe this, okay? Keep in mind, I'm no short-term predictor. This is not what I do for a living, predicting short-term stuff that's gonna happen, but I believe there are some pretty good reasons on why I can make this argument that the stock market will bottom within the next 30 days, okay? So the first reason is there's so much bad news already priced in the market. Never mind what might transpire in the stock market over the coming weeks, over the next, let's say, 30 days. There's so much bad news priced in. There's such a lack of earnings. Keep in mind, we just lost 10,000 points on the Dow, right? We just lost 10,000 points in the Dow in one month. In one month, we lost 10,000 points on the Dow. Needless to say, a lot of bad news is already priced in the market. Never mind if we continue with this market we're on right now for the next, let's say, two to three weeks. I mean, the, the, we're, we're in this little market right now where the stock market has one day that's good and then two days that are really, really bad. That's the type of market we're in right now, okay? And so when you're in that type of, of, of ugly market, like eventually you're gonna get to a situation where almost all the bad news that could possibly come out is already priced into the market. And this is something that messes with investors' heads bad, especially a lot of people that get late to the game and start buying put options or shorting the market after things have already gone down bad because they're like, oh, the more bad news is going to come out. That company's going to miss earnings. Oh my gosh, they're going to, their stock's going to tank even more. And yeah, that stock's already down 65% in the past month, but it's going to get a lot worse because earnings are going to be really bad for them. And this is what really screws with investors' mind because all of a sudden, guess what happens? That company reports those bad earnings, but they weren't quite as bad as a lot of people feared and the stock shoots up and that person ends up getting destroyed because it had already been priced in. Keep in mind, the stock market is already pricing in the, like basically 2020 is just a disastrous year for the, the, the global economy and the US economy. Like that is already being priced in the economy and probably will continue to be priced in over the coming days. And so if you're looking at it from that perspective, you understand essentially, oh, a lot of this is gonna be priced in. This happens with stocks. Good news too. I've seen it with countless stocks over time or the market in general, where countless stocks will go up and up and up and somebody will try to jump in it like an earnings play or, or you know, because they, they think, oh, that company's gonna be earnings and the company does be earnings and they do be guidance and the stock will go down. Why does it go down? go down? Because it's already been priced in that that stock is priced to perfection. We call that price to perfection in the stock market where stock just keeps going up and everybody knows they're going to beat on earnings and they do beat on earnings and they do beat on guidance and the stocks goes down. 
It was priced to perfection. And you get down the downside as well, where basically you get into a situation where the market just is in a situation where it's just like all the bad news is priced in. And I believe there's a high probability that the majority, if not all the bad news will be priced in within the next 30 days from recording this video, okay? Number two reason is essentially what I like to call being in the eye of the storm, the hurricane, and the mud, okay? So essentially, this happens to a lot of individual stocks. And as an individual stock picker, you go through this all the time. And this also happens in the global economy. And this also happens in the stock market. Keep in mind, the stock market is a lot of a perception game, right? I mean, sometimes there's been times in the market where people perceive stocks to be worth a 44 PE, right? And there's been times in the stock market where the perception was stocks are only worth a 10 PE. Everything is very perception-based when you're talking about assets, right? The house I lived in, it's a perception. You might think it's worth X dollar. Somebody else might think it's worth this dollar. A brand new Ferrari to me might be worth $20,000, whereas some other guy will pay a half million dollars for a, for a brand new Ferrari because that's that cool to him and that, that's worth it to him, right? Everything is perception-based. A, 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 a wine bottle at a restaurant to me should be like 20 or 30 bucks, but to some other person, they might pay a thousand or $10,000 for a wine bottle. Everything is perception-based when it comes to investing in assets. And right now we're in a hurricane situation in the stock market. Where we're just we're just getting thrown around. There's so much bad news being thrown at us, and eventually you get to a place. Whether you're talking about the market in general, or whether you're talking about the stock market in general, or an individual stock, where there's just been so much mud thrown at it that it doesn't that that even if more bad news starts to come out. It doesn't even matter anymore. I've been in I've been in countless stocks over time that it had they had so much bad news. They were in the eye of the storm, right around the center where it was the most violent, and literally it got to a place over time where it just didn't matter. Even more bad news could come out, and it didn't matter. Why? Because the price had already come down so dramatically that eventually it got to a place that if you were slinging mud at it. It didn't even matter. The mud, there's just so much mud, it's just coming down at that point, and it doesn't even matter anymore, okay? And this is what happens in the stock market, okay? Now, the third and fourth reason. So the third reason is essentially the activity I'm seeing with average Joes out there. When I talk about average Joes, I'm not talking about people that are usually stock market investors. I'm talking about people that might have some money in an account over there, might have a 401k. For the activity I'm starting to see in a lot of those individuals, is showing that we're getting close to a bottom. And what do I mean by this? Well, a lot of these individuals are starting to have serious thoughts or are already starting to take action in terms of selling out of their stock market accounts. And I'm seeing this from a, quite a few people out there where they're panic selling now. The market has gone down so much and there's so much negativity in the media basically right now where a lot of these individuals, these average Joes are saying, I gotta get out of everything. I gotta sell all my stocks. Oh my goodness, it could go down even more. What if the Dow goes down to 15,000? What if the Dow goes to 10,000? And when you start to see some of these individuals that aren't usually stock market investors, when you see a lot of them start to get a lot of fear and start panic selling out of retirement accounts, 401ks, uh, you know, just individual retirement accounts and things like that, when you start to see those sort, that sort of activity, you're probably getting pretty dang close to a bottom. Keep in mind, it is always darkest before the dawn. That's a, that's what I love to kind of remind myself whenever we're going through a really tough time in the stock market or whether I'm in a particular stock and it's going through a really tough time, I always think it's always darkest before the dawn. It is true throughout time and it has always been true. It is always darkest before the dawn and we're starting to get close to that situation where I'm watching average Joes out there who, who you know, uh, don't do this type of stuff that I do, like buying individual stocks all the time. I'm seeing these individuals actually sell out, and um, that means we're pretty dang close to a bottom. I mean, if you look throughout history, usually when everybody's selling out and everybody's at max fear, then you're almost at a bottom. You're almost at a bottom when those sorts of situations happen, okay? And the last reason here, is essentially what's gonna happen around confidence. And, and so I, I put the word track up here. So if you've ever you know, seriously trained for sports before, and I'm not talking about like you were in like some Pee Wee football or something like that. I'm talking about seriously trained like with a really like high level high school team, college team, like I'm talking football track or something like that. You've probably gotten some workouts before where the coach told you you had to run this many sprints or you had this sort of workout today. And you just hear that and you're just like, oh my gosh, like how am I gonna possibly make it through that? Like that's ridiculous. And just your, your heart starts beating because what they just told you is so ridiculous that you're like, dude, I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna make it through this. Like this just sounds so hard. Then you do the workout, you go through the workout, 
and you're still alive, okay? You might feel like death, but you made it. You made it to the other side. Oh my gosh, and it's the, it's the best feeling. And if that workout was that ridiculous, it makes every other workout coming in the future look like it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's like, oh, we only have to do this today? Oh, that's nothing. Remember what we had to do two weeks ago? My goodness, now that was crazy, okay? And so what ends up happening in a situation like that, you start to build confidence in what we need in the stock market is we need the confidence to be built back up again. And how do you get confidence? You go through a really tough situation like we're going through right now where it is max pain and people are just like, like in a bad place and people are seeing their stock market accounts be down and down and down other than maybe like uh, you know a few people who happen to buy some put options like the one guy in my group who literally has made three million dollars in like the last month and by the way he's not lying about that like he has showed every single screenshot the guy made like three million dollars literally in like the past three weeks it's the most insane thing I've probably ever seen okay but needless to say once you go through something hard like that it actually builds confidence that oh my gosh we can make it out to the other side and what we've had in the stock market over the past number of years is so much recession talk and so much anxiety and fear about when the next recession was coming when the next stock market crash was coming we're here we're here it is here it is in front of everybody finally that this whole stock market crash this whole recession it's happening. We're going to have a recession. The next few quarters are going to be horrible. And if you're looking at GDP numbers, and if you're just looking at economic numbers in general, they're going to be awful. Like there's no doubt about it. We're in a stock market crash right now. The stock market just fell the most. It's, it's fallen in modern times in the past month. We're in a stock market crash. We're in a recession. It's here. And so we're here. And slowly, that anxiety from so many investors out there and from so many folks feeling, oh my gosh, when's it gonna come? And, and how's it gonna play out? And what's gonna happen? That will leave. And we will make it out to the other side in this situation. And a lot of people are gonna say, oh my gosh, we just made it through a, a crazy situation. Remember, like this is gonna be talked about for generations to come. Not just what happened here with the whole Roni, but I'm talking about what's happening in the stock market right now, the financials markets, everything. The fact that the whole United States economy Economy basically is in shutdown mode right now like, like all of this is huge this will be talked about for generations coming in the future and the confidence that will be gained from going through a situation like this is enormous and people always ask like how do I have so much confidence like how do I have so much confidence to continue to buy stocks as these stocks continue downtrend at the end of the day I just look at history like every time it, uh, buy the dip has worked like throughout history. And if it doesn't work this time, then that means like things went so far south, like you don't even want to be like, like part of the world. Like I'm getting in a rocket and going to eat with Elon up to Mars or something like that, because like that would be bad. But that gives me the confidence. And the fact that I started in 2008, 2009 during the great recession, it gives me so much confidence in the end because I've seen that situation. I participated in the market when the market was dramatic. I participated in the market in 2011 when there was the whole double dip recession fears, okay? I participated in all these different markets and now I'm participating in this one and it's just gonna give me more confidence than ever for the other side. And what a lot of you guys that are, this is your first big situation to go through, what you're gonna end up getting is a lot of confidence to get out to the other side and uh, it's not gonna, you're not gonna fear it nearly as much as somebody that hasn't been through it yet, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, we'll see. I, I believe the market will likely bottom within the next 30 days. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Regardless, I will be buying great companies that are great long-term investments You know, for the next several years out. I will continue to be a buyer of stocks and I'll continue to take assets off people's hands if they want to sell them to me. If the hedge fund over there wants to sell me when at 33, I'll be buying. If, if, the, if the hedge fund over there wants to sell me Facebook stock at 120, I'll be buying. If the, if the hedge fund over there uh, or the Tesla shares and, and bought them at 900 and now wants to sell them at 300, I'll be here, okay? I'll be here. Thank you for watching and have a great day.